Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, dear Lord, this morning as we open your word, we pray that you'll speak to us. As we study your passages, Lord, help us to understand that you are a God who cares for us, who's taking care of us, and who is trying to lead us through safe paths and to lead us into your kingdom. May we look up to you with confidence and follow you. This morning we pray that would be with our waiting congregation, Lord. Speak to us. May we hear your voice and respond. For I pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. This morning, uh, I actually want to divide this sermon into two parts. The reason is because it is so long, uh, I don't want to go beyond time, so somewhere in between I will stop and then continue this in part two. So this is our part one, okay? Now, today, uh, you will notice that I'm going to quote the spirit of prophecy uh, a number of times. We will be referring to the spirit of prophecy and uh, especially we shall be referring to this great controversy this book, uh, we shall be quoting a number of times, and uh, it's a wonderful book. If you don't have this book, you should read it. It gives you wonderful, it tells you exactly how the world is going to end. And uh, you must get a copy of this book and read it. It is going to be very beneficial and you will know a lot if you read this book. If you don't have one, see me after this service. I'll give it to you free of cost. Anybody who doesn't have one copy, just see me after the service and you'll get one. You know, God chooses singing as one of the primary ways of worship, of worshiping Him and edifying Him and, and, and encouraging one another. You know, this, uh, this morning I was uh, wondering, uh, where is our praise team? They boycotted. What happened? Nobody is here. But I want to thank uh, Terence. Terence, thank you for, uh, you know, stepping in and uh, helping out with our singing. Uh, you know, uh, I was in one of the churches uh, preaching sometime back and uh, there was, uh, the church was big, it was full. There were uh, choir, there was a choir sitting on the right hand, uh, three rows of benches, and uh, this choir, you know, they were enthusiastic, they sang all the responses, and they sang all the songs, and uh, uh, they didn't care of what people said. Wonderful choir, but uh, there were only two members in the choir. But they didn't give up. They still kept singing and they sang because they were praising the Lord. So God loves to hear his people sing 
and he always has. In fact, he commanded us to sing. He instructed the Israelites to sing in the Psalms. In the New Testament, the church is told to sing. We must sing in all circumstances we find ourselves in. Whether it be worship or in times of trouble or in times of rejoicing, it should be no surprise to read that singing plays a very important part in heaven. So let us sing. We must sing praises to God. God likes it. Now today, in the Bible, we'll be focusing on two songs. In the Bible, we have two songs uh, recorded. Both are songs of deliverance. One is found in Exodus 15, that's in the Old Testament, and then one we have in the New Testament, and that is Revelation 15. In Exodus 15, it is called the Song of Moses. And it was a song by, uh, which was sung uh, by the shores of the Red Sea as a spontaneous response to the miraculous deliverance. Israel had most, almost perished at the hands of Pharaoh and his mighty army. And their deliverance was a deliverance from above. It was not their achievement or their accomplishment. It was a work of God that had set them free. The people had been trapped, you know. They had been trapped between Pharaoh and then ahead there was the Red Sea. On either sides, there were big, huge mountains. No escape. The sea, two sides mountains, and behind was Pharaoh's army. They were trapped. But God made a way. He made a way for them through the waters and into a new life. And in response, they sang a song of praise to the one who is my strength and my power. He has become my salvation. Now, in the New Testament, also we have a song. It is in Revelation 15. And uh, uh, it is called the Song of Moses and the Lamb. It is sung by those who had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name. Great controversy. See how Mrs. White explains this. The Great Controversy, I'm reading from page 648 and 649. She says, and they sing a new song before the throne, a song which no man can learn save the 144,000. It is the song of Moses and the Lamb. A song of deliverance. None but the 144,000 can sing that song. For it is a song of their experience. These having been translated from the earth, from among the living. So these are people who will go to heaven without seeing death. They are being translated from the living. These are they 
which come out of great tribulation they have passed through the time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation friends we think that there are persecutions that have taken place in the past that's going to be nothing compared to what is coming tribulation you will see such as never was since there was a nation they have stood without an intercessor through the final outpouring of god's judgments but have but have been delivered so you can see that this is a future event right it's going to be taking place in heaven now the question is why why are they singing the song of moses and the lamb you get me what has moses got to do with this event they should be singing this the song of the lamb why moses well the reason is because the deliverance that takes place at the end will be similar to the deliverance in the time of moses we have a, a whole symbolic portrayal of what is going to happen with god's people in the end time what happened in the days of moses is what is going to happen again to god's people in the end time in other words there will be a series of events that will be similar to the deliverance that will take place during the time of moses these events will be parallel and will be repeated in the end time during the time of moses we were dealing with literal israel literal sea and literal uh, enemies but in the end time we are dealing with worldwide events having to do with spiritual events spiritual waters and spiritual drying up of waters and spiritual deliverance of god's people that is the deliverance from the bondage of sin so you see from exodus chapter 2 all the way to exodus chapter chapter uh, 15 from 2 to 15 uh, we are going to see a pattern sequence of events it will be the, in the same order in which these events will take place even in the end history will repeat itself and let us start with with these events exodus exodus chapter 2 exodus chapter 2 and verses 23 to 25 what does it say it says now it happened in the process of time that the king of egypt died then the children of israel groaned because of bondage they groaned because of bondage and they cried out and their cry came to god up to god because of the bondage so we find that the children of israel were in bondage they were in bondage to pharaoh they were servants of pharaoh god wanted them to be his servants so it was necessary for god to deliver them 
By the way, who was Pharaoh? Do you know who was Pharaoh? You know, Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 29 and verses 3. Ezekiel chapter 29 and verses 3 gives the answer if you want to know who was exactly Pharaoh. It says, Speak and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon, that lieth in the midst of his rivers. So who is Pharaoh? Pharaoh is the great dragon. Pharaoh is called the great dragon. You know, is this term anywhere else in the scriptures? You remember this term anywhere else in the scriptures? Yes, you'll see that in Revelation chapter 12 and verses 17. It says that, uh, that the dragon was enraged with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. So Israel cried to God for deliverance. Why? Because they, they could not deliver themselves. God heard their prayers and sent a person to Egypt. Who was that person? Moses. So God sent Moses to deliver Israel. But before Moses could call the people out of bondage, Moses had to learn a very important lesson. And what is this important lesson? You know that Moses had gone through training in Egypt. So he was well versed with wars and uh, army and uh, fight and strength and he, he, he knew everything. And Moses had to learn this very important lesson. What is that lesson? That lesson is, it is not by might, it is not by power, but by the spirit in which Israel would be delivered. He had to learn the lesson of humility. It is not with armies and with military might, but by the might of God. He had to depend on God. So, 40 years he had to go through a training of unlearning what he had learned in Egypt. 40 years. And after the 40 years of uh, learning or unlearning what he had learned in Egypt, after 40 years, God is asking him, go and uh, bring this uh, ch children of Israel out of Egypt. And what is Moses' reply? I cannot speak. I cannot speak. I don't know how to speak. And the Lord said to him, you know what the Lord said to him? It's found in Exodus chapter 4 and verses 11. God is saying, who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not I? And then verse 12, the Lord says, Now, therefore go, and I will be your mouth, and teach you what you shall say. In other words, God is saying that you are not going to do the speaking. I am going to do the speaking through you. You see, this is what we need to learn today. And then God tells Moses that I have a mission for you. Go to Egypt and call my people out, out of bondage, so that they may worship me. Why? Because they may worship me. Exodus uh, chapter 8 and verses 1. 
so that they you must bring them out of bondage so that they may worship me you know today most of god's people are already in bondage under satan and the people are crying out for deliverance and in revelation 18 revelation 18 god is calling a people just like moses he is calling a people you and me just like moses to call the people out of babylon but that cannot happen you know before in fact before that can even happen we also need to learn a lesson just like moses we it is not by our uh, you know self dependence but to fully depend on god for deliverance we have to learn unlearn many things and uh, and realize that salvation only comes from the lord some people say i i i can't speak i cannot speak i cannot go out and speak many people like that in the church things like that i cannot speak friends you know what god is telling you see in luke luke chapter 21 14 and 15 to people who say i can't speak this is what the lord is saying luke 21 verses 14 and 15 it says i will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist god will give you a mouth if you are saying i cannot speak he will give you the mouth he will tell you what to speak mark 1311 mark 1311 when they arrest you when they arrest you okay this is during the time of persecution do not worry of what you will speak don't worry what you will speak for what is given to you in that hour when you are caught you may be thinking what will i speak in that hour when uh, for what is given to you in that hour speak that for it is not you who speaks but the holy spirit speaks through you you get me that gives you confidence don't be frightened speak that for what you speak is what the holy spirit speaks through you so moses he cried out uh, you know come out come out of egypt in the last days in revelation 14 it says we we are to call out the people call them out of babylon revelation 14 we are to call the people out of babylon come out of her my people now you will notice that uh, there were many miracles that took place we know when moses went to pharaoh uh, he he performed many miracles uh, uh, you will recall that moses uh, uh, when he went to pharaoh he 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 took his rod and he threw it you know on the floor and uh, it became what it became snake but notice that pharaoh's magicians also were able to do counterfeit miracles they also brought rods and threw that also became snakes counterfeit counterfeit miracles they were able to do exactly the same my dear friends in the last days god's people you and i god's people 
will perform mighty miracles. Let's see what Mrs. White speaks about. Great controversy. Great controversy was uh, page 612. 612. Mrs. White gives a very clear explanation, you know, of what is going to take place. Servants of God. You are a servant of God? You are a servant of God? Servants of God. Servants of God with their faces lighted up and shining with holy consecration will hasten from place to place proclaiming the message from heaven. All over the earth the warning will be given by messengers. Servants, by the servants of God. You will be able to do miracles, friends. If you are a servant of God, you will be able to do miracles, mighty miracles. And she says, miracles will be wrought. The sick will be healed. And signs and wonders will follow the believers. If you are a believer in Christ, you will do miracles, mighty miracles for God. Now some of you may ask, why isn't that power given to us today? This power will be given only in the end time, not now. If that power was given to you today, you will misuse it. We will use it for our own glory. But in the last days, that power will come to you. In Revelation 13, 13, Revelation 13, 13, we find that Satan also works. When you work miracles, Satan will also work miracles. Satan also works counterfeit miracles with lying wonders, even bringing down fire from heaven on, on, on the earth in the sight of men. Thus all the inhabitants of the earth will have to take their stand. Great controversy page 624 gives a very neat description of how Satan will do counterfeit miracles. Great controversy, page 624. It says, as the crowning act of the great drama of deception, Satan himself will personify Christ now the great deceiver will make it appear that Christ has come. In different parts of the earth, Satan will manifest himself among men with a majestic be, uh, being, being the dazzling brightness, uh, you know, resembling the deception of the Son of God. Shouts of triumph rings out upon the air. Christ has come, Christ has come. The people prostrate themselves in adoration before him while he lifts up his hands and pronounces a blessing upon them as Christ blessed, blessed his disciples when he was on earth. He heals the diseases of the people and claims to have changed the Sabbath to Sunday and then commands all who hallow the day which he has blessed. This is what Satan is going to do. You know, we also read 
of, uh, you know, during the plague in Egypt, during the plagues, there were calamities that fell on the Egyptian civilization to make them repent. That is why these calamities came on the Egyptians, to make them repent. But instead, instead, these calamities, instead of repenting, it hardened, it hardened the hearts of the Egyptians against Israel and blamed God's people for what was happening to them. In the last days, the same thing is going to happen. Same thing is going to happen. Let's see how Mrs. White describes it. This is page 614, Great Controversy, 614. Mrs. White says, those who honor the law of God have been accused of bringing judgment upon the world. And they will be regarded as the cause for the fearful convulsions of nature and strife and bloodshed among men that are filling the earth with woe. The power attending the last warning has enraged the wicked. Their anger is kindled against all who have received the message. And Satan will excite to instill greater intensity the spirit of hatred and persecution. We also know during the time of Israel, when they were in Egypt, during the time of Moses, actually the Sabbath, the Sabbath had come to a time of testing. Did you know that for the children of Israel? You know, Moses is requesting to Pharaoh so that Israelites can observe Sabbath. Yes, that is actually what was his request. A rest from labor. Exodus 5.5. Exodus 5.5. Five. Exodus chapter 5 and verses 5. It says, Pharaoh said, Look, the people of the land are many now. All right? Many now. And you make them rest from their labor. You know this word rest. This word rest is actually Sabbath. So it is actually saying, Pharaoh said, look, the people of the land are many now. You make them Sabbath from labor. Notice what Ellen G. White, she explains, you know, makes it more clear. Ellen G. White makes it very clear. This is from Patriarchs and Prophets. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 258. Page 258 regarding this. She says, In their bondage, the Israelites had to some extent lost the knowledge of God's law. And they had departed from its precepts. The Sabbath had been generally disregarded. And the exactions of their taskmaster made its observance apparently impossible. But Moses had shown his people that obedience to God was the first condition of deliverance. And notice this next sentence. And made efforts 
and the efforts in and the efforts made to restore the observ observance of sabbath had come to the notice of their oppressors you see how clearly she makes it moses wanted to take the people into the wilderness to keep the sabbath and to worship god that is the reason that he is taking them out from bondage so that they can worship god and keep the sabbath and what happened when moses is making this request to pharaoh what is happening and that enraged pharaoh and so pharaoh made the work of the israelites even more difficult exodus 5 verses 6 6 to 8 so the same day pharaoh commanded the task masters of the people and their officers saying you shall no longer give the people straw to make uh, bricks as before okay let let them go and gather straw for themselves and you shall lay on them the quota of bricks which they made before you shall not reduce it same quota you know friends in the end times you are going to see the same thing happening all over again sabbath is going to be the issue at the end time there is going to be plagues that fall on the earth plagues will fall on the earth and god's people is going to be blamed for it and sabbath observance is going to be made very difficult sabbath observance is going to be made very very difficult exodus chapter 10 verses 28 and 29 exodus chapter 10 verses 28 and 29 we find the close of probation for the egyptians there was a close of probation for the egyptians it says then pharaoh said to moses get away from me and take heed to yourself and see my face no more for in the day you see my face you shall die and so moses said what does moses say you have spoken well i will never see your face again that is moses reply did you know in the scripture to hide the face means to withdraw favor and to fall under god's wrath notice what it says in psalms psalms 27 and verses 9 and 10 psalms 27 verses 9 and 10 david says do not hide your face from me do not turn your servant away in anger you have been my help do not leave me nor forsake me for god is my salvation so in other words when god turns his face away from me he is forsaking me he is forsaking me let's see what it says in great controversy mrs white page 428 
when the work of investigation shall be ended when the case when the cases of those who in all ages have professed to be followers of Christ have been examined and decided then and not until then probation will close and the door of mercy will be shut friends we don't know while i'm standing here my name may be called right up in heaven in the in the investigative judgment your names may be called right now and the no dead and the door of mercy will close shut don't wait for tomorrow tomorrow might be too late your probation might be closed today if the lord if the holy spirit speaks to you give your life to christ right now let me take one more point you know before israel left egypt before israel left egypt there was a sealing that took place sealing god's people were sealed it's not it's not the people actually it uh, it is uh, you know their houses their houses were sealed to protect them from the destruction that had, uh, that was to come notice in exodus chapter 7 uh, uh, chapter 12 and verses 7 exodus chapter 12 and verses 7 it says and they shall take some blood some of the blood and put it uh, on the two door posts on the lintel of the houses where they ate where they ate it exodus chapter 12 and verses 15 now the blood it says now the blood shall be a sign for you on your houses where you are and when i see the blood i will pass over okay when i see the blood i will pass over you when i see the sign when i see the sign no plagues will fall on you you know by the way friends in the last days in the last days the sabbath the sabbath is going to be the sign yes it's the sabbath that's going to be the sign what is it uh, what does it say in revelation 7 and verses 2 and 3 revelation 7 and verses 2 and 3 and i saw another angel ascending from from the east having the seal of the living god and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our god in their foreheads i think we need a better explanation through mrs white great controversy verses 613 613 mrs white writes an angel an angel returning from the earth returning from the earth announces that the work is done the final test has been brought upon the world and all who have proved themselves loyal to the divine precepts have received the seal of the living god great controversy page 640 640 it says the enemies of god's law the enemies of god's law from the ministers down to the least among them 
have a new conception of truth and duty. Too late, they see that the Sabbath of the fourth commandment is the seal of the living God. How much more clearer can this be? Too late they see that the Sabbath of the fourth commandment is the seal of the living God. Too late they see the future nature of their spurious Sabbath and the sandy foundation on which they have been building. They find that they have been fighting against God. Friends, I'll close with this and we'll continue next time on our part two of this. But let us be prepared. Let us be prepared because time is running short. I'm quite sure that many of us seated here will see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ with your own eyes. The time is short and we need to prepare our lives for that coming because uh, we need to be prepared for even the great time of tribulation. In our next part, you will see how we can get prepared and we have the assurance that God will bring us deliverance from all the troubles that is before us. So let us be prepared and be faithful until the Lord comes. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we pray that Thou would help us to understand the time in which we are living. It is not by our own might we need help from you. With your help, we can make it through. So help us to be faithful and loyal to you and commit our lives into your hands. For I pray Jesus' most precious name. Amen.